These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So molecular orbitals is one of the trickiest uh, parts of the course for a lot of students. Let's see if we can kind of uh, clear that up. Now, theoretically, there's both sigma molecular orbitals and pi molecular orbitals. But at this point in the course, we don't really care about the sigma molecular orbitals. So we're just going to focus on drawing the pi molecular orbitals. And we're going to leave the sigma molecular orbitals out. Where do pi molecular orbitals come from? Well, I think you saw that in the video series you watched. Remember, or, or at least it was hinted at. Remember that, uh, so the basic idea is pi molecular orbitals are formed by side-to-side -side overlap of p atomic orbitals. Mm -hmm. Pi molecular orbitals are formed from side-to-side -side overlap of p atomic orbitals. Pi molecular orbitals are formed from side-to-side -side overlap of p atomic orbitals. As I might have mentioned in the other video series, pi is the Greek letter for p, because the pi molecular orbitals come from the p atomic orbitals. Now, they have to be side-to-side -side overlap, like this. Head-to-head -head overlap is not considered pi. So this is not, this is not a pi orbital. Only side-to-side -side overlap is pi. So you need two things. You need, it, has, it has to be p orbitals, and they have to be side-to-side. -side. So you couldn't use sp2 orbitals or sp3 orbitals. They've got to be p orbitals, and they've got to be side-to-side. -side. Now, the interesting thing about side-to-side -side p orbitals is that you can, you can get more than two of them lined up. You could have two side-to-side -side overlaps, or you could have three side-to-side -side overlaps, or four side-to-side -side overlaps. So here's a molecule where there's a p orbital on four adjacent atoms, and that's giving us four overlapping p orbitals. Now you saw in that other system then, what do we call it when we have uh, more than two side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals? What do we call it when we have three or more side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals? That's conjugation. We saw that three or more side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals is called a conjugated system. I mentioned that a lot of instructors at first say that conjugation means, uh, means alternating single and double bonds, but that's, a, that's, not, that's only one type of conjugation. In general, conjugation means three or more side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So what do we call the electrons in these orbitals? Well, we would call them the pi electrons. So the pi electrons are the electrons in the pi molecular orbitals, which means that they're in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So it's going to be important to be able to find the p and the pi electrons. Now, how many pi molecular orbitals will there be? Well, there's conservation of orbitals. Remember that the pi molecular orbitals are coming from the overlapping p orbitals. Well, if you have two overlapping p orbitals, you would get two pi molecular orbitals. Or if you have three overlapping p orbitals, you would get three pi molecular orbitals. So how many pi molecular orbitals would this molecule have? Four. Right. There's four atomic orbitals that I've shown, so that's going to generate four molecular orbitals. That's one of the ideas of conservation of orbitals. Let's draw the pi molecular orbitals for ethene. How many pi molecular orbitals would there be? Two. Now, those are going to be at two different energy levels. And each of them is created by the overlap 
of two p orbitals. So here's one of the pi molecular orbitals, and here's another pi molecular orbital. This would be called the bonding, and this would be called the anti-bonding. Is this picture looking at all familiar? Okay. We have the two p orbitals, which are coming together to form two pi molecular orbitals, bonding down below and anti-bonding up above. We use the star to indicate anti-bonding. Now, the orbitals can be represented by shading. So we can put shading over here. Now, this is the more stable orbital, so it should have a bonding interaction. Well, how do we show a bonding interaction? Bonding here occurs between like lobes. I guess this is the opposite. This is the opposite of uh, electrostatics, where positives like negatives. In electrostatics, opposites attract. But in the molecular orbital theory, like lobes bond with each other and stabilize each other. So this would be indicating a bonding interaction. And this would be the pi molecular orbital and the anti-bonding. Notice that we have what's called a node here. A node is indicating the anti-bonding interaction between these two orbitals. Notice there's zero nodes here and one node here. Now let's try putting electrons in. How many pi electrons does ethene have? Two. Two, because remember, we're not counting the sigma electrons. We're not counting sigma. We're not even bothering drawing the sigma molecular orbitals. We're just drawing the pi molecular orbitals. So we're not worried about the sigma bond, only the pi bond. So there are two electrons, and according to Hunt's rule, we would draw them like this, with opposite orientations. Notice that there are no electrons here in the anti-bonding. Well, that makes sense, because that would start destabilizing the molecule. Ethene is stable, because we're only putting the electrons in the bonding orbital. Have you guys heard the, the terms homo and lumo? Okay. Well, is this the homo or the lumo? Lumo. Okay, and this would oh. be... Homo. No, 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 opposite. Okay. This stands for, what does this stand for? Hydrogen highest occupied molecular orbital. Highest occupied molecular orbital. That's why this is, this is the homo because it's occupied. And this LUMO stands for? The lowest unoccupied. unoccupied. Well, this is unoccupied. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Sp2. And how about this one? Sp2. And how about this one? Sp2. Carbocations are always Sp2. Does this have a p orbital? Yes. How about this? Yes. And how about this? No. Yes. Sp2 atoms always have p orbitals. That was one of the videos you reviewed. You saw that an Sp2 hybridization always has three Sp2 orbitals yeah. and one p orbital. orbital at each of these atoms. Now, the thing that might have confused you is that, in a sense, this p orbital is empty, because this is a carbocation. This p orbital and this p orbital can be thought of as contributing electrons. This p orbital might be thought of as empty, in a way. At least it's not contributing any or uh, electrons, but it still exists. It's just like a pocket still exists, even if it's empty. And it's not really empty, because as you saw from that other video series, these electrons are really spread over all three of these orbitals. Since the electrons are really spread over all three of these orbitals, none of them is really empty. All right, so how many p orbitals do we have in this compound? Three. three. So how many pi molecular orbitals will there be? Three. Three. So now our diagram would look like this. This would be the bonding. Now this, since we have a middle level, this is called the non-bonding level. 
bonding, non-bonding, ND for non-bonding, and anti-bonding, star for anti-bonding. Now, what do the pi molecular orbitals look like? Each pi molecular orbital is formed from the overlap of the three p orbitals. If we're using the same three p orbitals, how can we get three different pi molecular orbitals? Because there's different patterns of bonding. For example, if I put in a shading here, should this be shaded or not shaded? Shaded. And how about here? Because we want maximum bonding interactions in the bottom. Maximum bonding interactions. And you want it, like when you draw these pictures, they have to be symmetrical. That's something I should have mentioned earlier. That's right. These pictures are supposed to be symmetrical. I should have mentioned they're supposed to be symmetrical. 